So our next presentation is about the ELEX's dictionary matrix. It will be presented by Tina Munda uh, and Simon Kre. So the floor is yours. Hello, I'm Tina, and I'm going to tell you about ELEX's dictionary matrix. I see a few familiar faces from the ELEX's project here, so they know precisely what I'm going to talk about. But for those of you who are not familiar with the project, I'm just going to break down the title for you. So Alexis was a, a huge European project spanning from 2018 to last year uh, under the auspices of European Union. Um, Alexis is an acronym that means European Lexicographic Infrastructure. Uh, Dictionary Matrix is one of the tools that was developed in the project and is the subject of this presentation. And Alexilink is the interface where Dictionary Matrix is manifested. So the idea of Dictionary Matrix is interoperability. That is to interconnect existing lexicographic resources so that they can work together, exchange information. The process involves ensuring um, compatibility and harmonization between different lexicographic resources uh, and then the linking occurs with the help of Alexis tools and services. And the result is a repository of links that we will see uh, in a bit in the Alexis link infrastructure. So the outline of this presentation is as follows. First, I will tell you a bit about linking so that you know what you will be seeing in the demonstration part. Then the, the demonstration an overview of the linked resources in the project, and last but not least, future plans uh, for the service, which will be presented by Simon Crick, uh, who also coordinated the project. Now let's delve a bit deeper into the concept of linking. There are two modes of linking. First, intralingual linking, where two dictionaries of the same language are linked, um, this is on the lemma or headword, if you will, level. Second, cross-lingual linking, which is linking with Babelnet, so a dictionary in any language is linked with Babelnet, and this is on the sense level. First, uh, let's talk about intralingual linking. So here we have uh, two dictionaries in the same language as the input. Uh, this is then processed by NASHK, which is a tool developed in the project by Insight Center for Data Analytics, University of Galway, Ireland. Incidentally, um, NASHK uh, translates into links in Irish and thereby epitomizes the purpose. And the result uh, are links established between the two dictionaries on the basis of matching lemma plus part of speech. So this is on the headword level, as I already said. Uh, NASHK relies on a configuration, so there's actually another option of linking with NASHK, and this is on the sense level, but um, yeah, this was not done in the project. The second mode is cross-lingual linking, uh, linking to a Babelnet. Here the input is a dictionary in any language, but it must include the definition element beside the part of speech because this is linking on the sense level. Uh, this is processed by Babelnet Linker, a web service developed in the project by the Sapienza University of Rome, Italy. And in simple terms, what happens here is Babelnet Linker's API enables a definition in any language to be mapped to a semantically equivalent English definition in Babelnet, or to be more terminologically precise, uh, to a synset in Babelnet, so a concept. Additionally, each sense, once linked to Babelnet, is automatically connected with all other senses similarly linked. That means that senses from different various dictionaries that are linked to the same synset form an interconnected network and are all displayed together upon querying. We'll see that in a bit. So uh, essentially, Babelnet acts as a pivot 
integrating dictionaries within the Alexis infrastructure at the sense level. So let's see how this works now. So uh, this is the interface, uh, Matrix Alexis. Uh, this is our front page. And first, we have to set the language. And then we type in the lemma we want to see the links for. So for this demonstration, I chose a Slovenian word, machka. Not because Slovenian is my mother tongue, but simply because um, the bigger number of dictionaries in the same language were Slovenian. So we'll be able to see more links. Maćka, yes. This is a cat in English. So uh, the results that we get are that of intralingual linking. So linking with Nashk, intralingual. Um, we see two columns, but actually we should be looking horizontally. Um, so um, horizontally aligned uh, entries represent a link. So uh, that means that they have the same lemma and part of speech. And if we want to know more about uh, the entry, we can click on this chain label here. I don't know if you can see. Uh, and we are redirected to Lexonomy to that precise entry, uh, since here the, the dictionary is uploaded for linking. So uh, those are links. We see there are many links for the reason I told you. If we toggle the concept view here, we get links with Babelnet, so cross-lingual links. We have to wait a bit. OK, here we are. So here on the left-hand side, we still have our query lemma. But now on the right-hand side, we have the link with Babelnet. So it's also hyperlinked, so it's also redirected to Babelnet. We see a furry cat. And this is then uh, the established link with Babelnet. And those indented uh, entries, actually concepts, are also linked with, with this synset in Babelnet. That means that all those concepts are actually cross-lingual uh, cross equivalents. Uh, and we expect them to bear the same meaning. Oh. So here are more links. And yeah, about that, um, there's also a label that tells us about the similarity, about the quality of the link established. The greenish circle with the word exact tells us that the established link is uh, significant. So the link of this concept to this Babelnet concept. And then there's the related label with red circle that tells us that the link is less reliable, but still relevant. Uh, last but not least, there's a filtering feature here where you can uh, filter the results, the links, by language, dictionaries, and similarity or quality of the link. Uh, the interface also gives us the option to change to dark mode if you prefer a more ominous atmosphere. So, uh, so much for the demonstration. Let's uh, move on to the lexicographic resources that have been linked in the project. So out of all lexicographic resources included in the infrastructure, there were 54 resources that were available or are available under the open license, mostly Creative Commons, but others as well. And naturally, only these were suited for linking. So if I recap the process, first, the resources to be linked had to be transformed into a unified format. This was largely done with the help of another Alexis tool, Alexifier. Uh, subsequently, those resources were uploaded to Lexonomy, another Alexis tool, where linking is executed. 
So ultimately, uh, there were nine resources that were linked with NASHK, so uh, that have undergone the intralingual linking, specifically seven Slovene dictionaries and two Croatian dictionaries, and 19 dictionaries were linked with Babelnet. Uh, now let's move on to a continu continuity of this uh, uh, service, and this will be presented by Simon. Simon, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so I should mention a few things. I think first that <clears throat> you can uh, make a connection if you attended uh, the keynote this morning. Uh, how you <clears throat> basically linking or linked uh, linguistic linked open data uh, also, in my opinion, is still relevant in spite of the arrival of large language models. And I think we should do it on a really, really big scale, in fact, to link everything. And I consider, <coughs> I consider what we did uh, about linking uh, in Alexis as a sort of proof of concept so that you see how you take a dictionary, you transform it into some, un, uh, some format where parts of the uh, dictionaries are recognizable as headwords, as examples, or what, as whatever. And then you try, so what happens when you try to uh, <coughs> find the same kind of information in the other resource or in other hundred resources. So <clears throat> this is what the service is. And um, because the, the project is now over, uh, we, uh, at least, well, some of us <laughs> from the project uh, will continue this work um, inside this, uh, well, actually two types of organizations, and this is one of them, uh, Alexis Association, uh, which is an association that uh, is an association of institutions, not in, of individuals. So <clears throat> what should be done is uh, gather the community of institutions that probably have some data of lexicographic type and uh, <clears throat> do the same thing for as many languages as possible. Um, and the whole infrastructure should be supported, at least the idea is, uh, by Alexis Clarin Knowledge Center, which we will, I will say a few words about it later. And Currently, the uh, idea is to <coughs> revamp basically everything, uh, what you saw now. First, uh, the, um, what goes into the pipeline. So uh, for some time during Alexis, we uh, established a committee to produce a new lexicographic standard inside OASIS. Uh, <coughs> organization, so it should be open standard. It's called the DMLEX. Uh, and we will use this, um, so we will probably switch, no, not probably, surely, switch from <laughs> TILX0, uh, which is currently used in Lexifier and the, the whole pipeline to DMLEX because it's, it's much more uh, useful for this kind of um, organization of data. Uh, so that's one thing. <clears throat> then uh, revamp also the uh, editor itself. So the central piece, which is now Lexonomy, an open source uh, dictionary editor. And <clears throat> I think this is the, the really important part. This is the sh just technical, but this is also research. Uh, so what can you do? Now we have NASHK, we have Babel Netlinker, and you have definitions, you have mm, 
So pieces which you can combine, we know that. You can combine them using large language models. But we don't know how exactly. So this is what will be done. Uh, <clears throat> well, I can say that I will work on this <laughs> uh, in the future. Uh, so the association, so the two organization uh, organizations that this will happen are these. So Alexis Association, uh, and I have to tell you that I just, to th maybe I can mention this, that we might uh, rename ourselves from Alexis Association to Alexis Network for some legal reasons. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> so it's just a simple uh, agreement, basically, and um, it was prepared for the meeting we had, the last meeting we had in uh, Florence of Alexis project, and um, <clears throat> it took really long time to sort out everything <laughs> from the project. And I sent out uh, like three weeks ago to uh, all the institutions that expressed interest last year to become part of the association because we now have, we, we have the last version of, or the final version of the agreement. And if you want to join, <coughs> there is some explanation on the Alexis website under Observers Association, and you can send uh, an email to me uh, with <coughs> the request that you would like to also join. And um, the other one, is the Clarin Knowledge Center, which was also proposed already last year, and we waited for this um, <coughs> uh, to sort out e everything uh, after the project was ended. And the um, the main uh, the main complaint, let's say, from the assessment committee of uh, Clarin Knowledge Centers, was that we should have a website which is dedicated to the knowledge center itself because we only have the website of the project. And this is what we are doing um, <clears throat> now. And I assume, so for me, that the deadline uh, to finish everything, to have the, the new knowledge center done is actually clearing conference, I think sometime in October, I guess. So that's when it should be uh, set up uh, with all the tools that will come under that umbrella. Uh, yeah, well, these are basically the tools. I said that already. So <clears throat> the data, the tools, and the services and uh, <clears throat> will come under that umbrella and will be developed in two tiers. So, uh, those who are not part of Clarin, because there are complaints about that. Not all institutions, not all countries in Europe are in Clarin. So you will be able to collaborate inside Clarin or inside the association, basically doing the same thing uh, <coughs> on two sides. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, now it's your turn. Uh, so I was wondering, uh, the dictionaries that are already linked, 19, and uh, it, it doesn't matter how many, so were there some kind of uh, criteria or restrictions on um, which type, like general purpose dictionaries, or uh, does it have to be a single word head word? Yeah. Well, uh, there is one uh, constraint here. I mean, the whole, <clears throat> the project, and also what we intend to do after the project is about 
lexicography, but maybe we should say general lexicography. It means we are not, <laughs> we are dealing less with terminology and uh, we want to concentrate actually on a general language in the sense that it is most interesting um, <clears throat> as far as polysemy and difficult stuff is concerned. So where does, <clears throat> um, uh, let's say, uh, single word versus multi-word expressions, how do you do that, where is the, you know, uh, the, the, the divide between what should you include, what not, what comes under collocations, but you have to explain something about uh, a multi-word a multi expression. So the, let's say it concerns the difficult part of the language. I mean, not that terminology is not difficult, but in other ways, let's say. So the, the demo was for linking single words, right? Um, yeah. Um, for the whole dictionary, you have to go via um, elexifier and then lexonomy. Is that correct? So, um, but you, you're working on a DMLEX version of, of that. So should we wait until that is available before we try out linking entire dictionaries into the dictionary matrix? Maybe, Michal, you can just <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I'm happy to say that um, DMLEX is in a pretty good shape at the moment <laughs> already. So I think all these things will uh, converge in the autumn, let's say. Uh, I invite you to attend. Wh when do you have the presentation, uh, Michal? Ah, so that's the presentation of DMLEX, so we will learn all about the present state of this proposal. It's a draft, but we are using it already for our purposes, and it works fine. It's good. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> well, second thing to say is that you should join uh, the association, right? because you will be informed about all new things. Uh, and um, yeah, I think uh, we will basically be looking for appropriate funding from there. Yeah. Time for more comments and questions. While you think of something, I have a question for Tina maybe. When you were talking about um, the linked dictionaries and the re reliability, then you said that it was um, uh, reliable or related, I don't know, related and uh, related and direct links. So is that done manually or how do you check for, how do you confirm this reliability? Uh, well, uh, there's a similarity between the definitions calculated uh, and uh, there's, there's a certain, certain threshold that is set, uh, and above it, the link is uh, exact, and above it, it's related, and yeah, it works like this. Thank you. Well, if there are no more questions, I'm sure we can discuss other issues during a coffee break, so thank you once again for the presentation, and we invite the next one.